about 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.5, number 25. And here we were given a function and said, hey, can you use the rational zero theorem to find all the roots? So technically, the rational zero theorem is means, hey, can you go ahead, take all the factors of the constant and put them in ratio to all the factors of your lead coefficient? And that's, that's how you would start to make a list of all the possible rational roots. So in this case, right, if we look at our constant term, that was negative 80, and our lead coefficient was 1. And so the, the lead coefficient, that's the easy one, because there's only um, factors of plus or minus 1. But look at this shenanigans for 80. Look at how many options you have, right? So if we're taking a look at this, these would be my Qs, these would be my Ps, and when I put them in ratio, I have that gigantic list. So technically, if you didn't have a graphing calculator, you would start plugging in, oops, excuse me, 1 and negative 1 for synthetic division, see if it worked. 2 and negative 2, 4 and negative 4. You could go through this really exhaustive list. And that's great if you don't have technology, but we do have technology, so let's use it. So what I would do is I would go over to my graphing calculator, and I would put this function into my y equals and see if I could spot any potential zeros. So now I didn't pull up a graphing calculator. I don't have it on my um, iPad, but I did have Desmos. So you see I graphed it here. And just taking a look, I think th this really clearly shows, well, not clearly, but it's showing that there might be a zero at four comma zero, right? There might be one over here. It's looking at negative four comma zero and one here at negative five comma zero. So that's gonna help me make an educated guess. And what I mean by that is, I'm not going to try plus or minus 80. I'm not going to try plus or minus 40, 20, 16, 10, all of these. I'm going to hone in on these guys right here. Because just based off of my graph, that's where it looks like I, I want to use synthetic division. Now, I could use either of negative 5, negative 4, or 4. I just opted to go with the one with the positive value. So I plugged 4 in for synthetic division. And then you can see my coefficients. Let me change colors, right? We got 1, 5, negative 16, and negative 80. And that goes with 1, 5, negative 16, and negative 80. And when I run through synthetic division, sure enough, I do get my 0. So what that's telling me is so far I've broken x cubed plus 5x squared minus 16x minus 80. At this point, I know it's x minus 4, and I get that because of that bad boy. And since I started with the cubic, this means this factor is going to start with a quadratic. So there's my remaining factor so far. So x squared plus 9x plus 20. And for me, whenever I get to the quadratic, I'm, I'm pretty happy because then I can start either using the quadratic formula or maybe I can factor it some more. And even if I, if I couldn't, if I wasn't sure what to do, I would go back to trying synthetic division with either negative 5 or negative 4. But as I start to burn through this, you can see, well, x squared plus 9x plus 20 breaks into x plus 4, x plus 5. And that's right in line with the zeros I saw at negative 5, 0, and negative 4, 0. Or I should say the x-intercepts, right? That would give me a factor of x plus 5. And this one would give me a factor of x plus 4. And that's exactly what I'm seeing. So here are my three zeros. All right? And they were all listed as candidates in that rational zero theorem. But I sure, sure didn't want to try all of those possible roots. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.